By the end of this lecture, you will be able to, to determine the guidelines of drinking water quality, to identify sources of water pollution, to understand the effects of water pollution, and finally, to recommend methods for preventing water pollution. Let's start with water. Water covers over 70% of the Earth's surface. It is a very important resource for people and for the environment. The guidelines of drinking water quality recommended by the WHO in 1993 and 1996 are related to physical aspects, chemical aspects, microbiological aspects, and finally, radiological aspects. Regarding the physical aspects, the ordinary customer usually judges water quality by its physical characteristics. Drinking water should be free from turbidity and color that may be present as a consequence of inadequate treatment or from sediments in the distribution system. It should also have acceptable taste and odor that could be disturbed by contamination of chemicals or as a byproduct of water treatment, such as chlorination. Hardness is an important factor. It is the soap-destroying power of water, and it is classified into carbonate or temporary hardness, which is due to the presence of calcium and magnesium bicarbonates, and the second is non-carbonate or permanent hardness, which is due to calcium and magnesium sulfates. Chemical aspects are also important. They include inorganic constituents. For example, ammonia in water is an indicator of possible bacterial, sewage, and animal waste pollution. pH. The acceptable pH is between 6.5 to 8.5. Less pH could cause corrosion of metals of the distribution pipes, which is made of lead, pH above 8.5 causes decrease in the efficiency of the chlorine disinfection process. Hydrogen sulfide. The rotten eggs odor of hydrogen sulfide is particularly noticeable in some groundwater and in the stagnant drinking water in the distribution system as a result of oxygen depletion and the consequent reduction of sulfate by bacterial activity. Moreover, depletion of dissolved oxygen in water supplies can encourage microbial reduction of nitrates to nitrites and sulfates to sulfides. Other inorganic constituents should be in its acceptable levels, like aluminium, copper, iron, manganese, sodium, sulfate, and zinc. Contaminants with cumulative toxic properties including arsenic, cadmium, chromium, cyanide, fluoride, lead, mercury, nickel, nitrate, selenium. The presence of certain chemicals in excess of the prescribed limits in a certain water source may constitute a ground for rejection of this water as a source of public health water. Chemical aspects also include organic constituents, such as pesticides formed of chlorinated hydrocarbons and its derivatives, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. The third aspect related to drinking water quality is the microbiological aspect, which is either bacterial indicators, viral indicators, or parasitic indicators. As for the bacterial indicators, ideally, drinking water should not contain any microorganisms known to be pathogenic. The primary bacteria is the coliform group, including both fecal organisms, for example, E. coli, and non-fecal organisms like Klebsiella aerogens. E. coli and total coliform bacteria must not be detectable in any 100 milliliter sample of water. 
If this pathogenic bacteria is present in drinking water, the first to be infected will be infants and young children, people who are debilitated or living under unsanitary conditions, sick and elderly people. Regarding viral indicators, drinking water should be free from any viruses which are infectious to men. Parasitic indicators. Drinking water should not contain any pathogenic intestinal protozoa. Rapid and slow sand filtration is effective in removing a high proportion of pathogenic intestinal protozoa. Regarding radiological aspects, Drinking water should be free from both naturally occurring radioactivity and any radioactivity that reach the water source as a result of man's activity. So, what if our water becomes polluted? Let's first know what is meant with water pollution. Water pollution is defined as any change or modification in the physical chemical and biological properties of water that will have a determinal consequence on living things. Then we should know the sources of water pollution and try to handle them. One of the major sources of water pollution is contamination with sewage and wastewater. Liquid waste from everywhere activities goes down the drain into a pipe which joins a larger sewer pipe under the road. The larger pipe also joins a major pipe that leads to the treatment center. Sometimes this process is not done properly and sewage is drained in seas and rivers contaminating them. Another source of water pollution is ocean and marine dumping. In some countries, paper waste, food waste, plastic, rubber, metallic and aluminium waste are disposed into the sea. Thus, they harm sea animals and causes a lot of deaths. Underground storage and tube leakage may also lead to water pollution. Many liquid products such as petroleum products are stored in metal and steel tubes underground. Other sewage systems run in underground tubes. Over time, they rust and begin to leak. If this happens, they contaminate the soil and the liquids in them end up in many nearby water bodies. Finally, the atmospheric deposition, which is the Pollution of water bodies caused by air pollution. Each time the water is polluted with sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide, they mix with water particles in the air and form a toxic substance. This falls as acid rain to the ground and gets washed into water bodies. The result is that water bodies also get contaminated and this affects animals and water organisms. Toxic fumes coming from vehicles not only lead to air pollution, but also water pollution. These fumes go up into the air and settle there, taking up the form of soot. The soot, being heavy, is brought down to the ground and will not only make its way into varied water bodies, but also settle onto the ground and leak into water, thus destroying the water ecology. Now, let's understand the harmful effects of water pollution. Pollution disrupts the natural food chain. Pollutants such as mercury, lead, and cadmium are eaten by tiny animals. Later, these animals are consumed by fish and shellfish, and the food chain continues to be disturbed at all higher levels. Water pollution can also affect our health, causing diseases. Foodborne hepatitis, A and E, can be transmitted through contaminated water. 
In many poor nations, there are always outbreaks of cholera and diseases as a result of poor drinking water treatment from contaminated waters. Toxins emitted by algae, growth, can cause stomach aches and rashes. Excess nitrogen in drinking water also pose serious risks to infants. Water pollution may also lead to death of animals due to the harmful effects of solid waste or oil spills thrown into water bodies. I think by now we need to think how to prevent water pollution. At the level of waste disposal, we should dispose of solid forms of wastes like tissue papers by putting them in trash bins rather than flushing them down the drain. In addition, rules, policies and laws regarding water purification systems need to be made strict so that industries cannot break them. And treatment of waste needs to be obligatory and not an option for industries. At the level of atmospheric management, take your vehicle for regular servicing. This will keep them in top running conditions and prevent pollution. Plant more trees. They prevent global warming as well as other forms of pollution. Do not keep the engine running at signals. This releases toxic chemicals in the air, which eventually lead to water pollution. 